so we're doing the cooling rates um, and crystal growth probe. So I'll just show you um, what's involved here. First of all, we need to fill, quarter fill the beaker with water, just approximate. The exact volume isn't that critical at this stage. So I'm just going to quarter fill this. That's heaps of water. Okay, and now I'm going to dissolve as much copper sulfate as I can into this water. What I'm trying to make is what's called a saturated solution. So I'm just going to start with three spoons and work from there. Stirring with this stirring rod to dissolve. How do I know when the solution is saturated? When no more copper sulfate will dissolve. That means that every particle of water, so to speak, will be clinging onto a particle of copper sulfate and it just can't hold any more. That's what's known as the solvent is saturated with the solute. I just can't get any more in. Now while I'm waiting for that to dissolve, I'm going to fill this beaker with a little bit of water and just get that heating up because I need some hot water later on. So I'm just putting that on the Bunsen burner. saturated solution. When no more will dissolve, that's when I know uh, I've done enough. All the time I'm stirring, stirring, stirring. What I've done here in making the saturated solution each particle of copper sulfate is now surrounded by water particles. I can't fit any more particles of copper sulfate in there. That's what's known as a saturated solution. What I'm going to do next though is place this saturated solution onto the Bunsen burner. And what that's going to do is spread out the water particles. And what that enables me to do is fit more copper sulfate into that solution. So when I heat up the water, they expand, go apart, and then I can fit more copper sulfate into the solution. So that's what I'm going to do now. So that's already started to warm up my water from before. Now I'm going to put my saturated solution at room temperature onto the Bunsen burner. And then I can add more copper sulfate because more space has been made in between those water particles. And again, I'm trying to make a saturated solution now with the hot solution. So I just need to keep adding, keep adding until no more can dissolve. And that's when I know that this solution has become saturated as well. All the time I'm stirring, stirring, watching to see if the copper sulfate is dissolved. Now while I'm waiting for that to dissolve, I'm going to set up two smaller beakers, both of the same size, 100ml beakers. And I'm going to get this larger beaker ready. Again, 
I'm filling it up with uh, cold or room temperature water. I want this fairly close, and in fact, if we were being really accurate, we would measure this to make it exactly the same. That's a little bit too much, so I'm going to tip it up. So I've got one room temperature water, and I've got one hot water that I had on the Bunsen burner before. Okay, that's important. We'll use those in a minute. Now back to our solution. Okay, that's all dissolved, and that's a saturated solution. Now I don't think I'll be able to dissolve any more copper sulfate in there. So that's done. I'm actually going to turn off the Bunsen burner. What I'm going to do with this solution now is pour half into each of these smaller beakers. And it sort of is important that we get this exactly right. And again, if we're making this 100% fair test, we'd make sure that they are spot on the same. I'm going to try and get them as close as I can. Really, it wouldn't have that much of an effect. Close the door! So what we have are two smaller beakers. Okay, both with the same solution. They came from the same beaker. Exactly the same amount of copper sulfate in there because I just halved it up. And if you can see those volumes, they're pretty much the same, which is important. Now, if you remember from before, I had one hot beaker and one room temperature beaker. What I'm going to put, do is put one of these smaller beakers to the hot one. This other beaker I'm going to put into the cool water. So what we end up is with two solutions that are the same, one in hot water, one in cool water, one of them is going to cool down quickly. I'm actually going to put this one in the fridge to get it to cool down even quicker. This one I'm going to leave up here on the tripod, which is already hot, and it will cool down even slower. I've turned off the Bunsen burner now, but that whole apparatus is still hot. So that's going to cool down quite slowly. This one, in the meantime, I'm going to put in the fridge, that's going to cool down really quick. So, that should affect our crystal formation at the end. We'll find out later on which one produces the bigger crystals. That's what we're interested in here. Which one is going to produce the bigger crystals. Let me show you something back on the whiteboard. So what happened here is I've made this saturated solution. This one is the room temperature. This one is the hot saturated solution. When both of these beakers cool back down to room temperature, What's going to happen? Water particles will contract, move back together, have no room for two copper sulfate particles anymore. One of them will be squeezed out and literally fall to the bottom of the beaker. This is what we're going to be making the crystals out of, these particles that are falling to the bottom. It's what's known as a precipitation. And they'll start to build crystals as they join up and interlock with each other. Okay, this is what we're forming our crystals out of. So we need a saturated solution so when it cools back down, shrink back down, me, push the copper sulfate out and form the crystal. That's it.